Got a little bit of a different backdrop today. Myself, Captain Scott Ray, Captain Nick Mosley, and the mad scientist himself, Jeremy Compton, we came out, made a big lap around East Bay. We saw quite a few floating, you know, bait fish type stuff, croaker. We saw a redfish or two, trout or two. Uh, as everybody's saying, it's quite often that when there is a fish kill, the fish, they, they'll sit on bottom until the water warms up. So we really don't know the extent of things. We've seen entire back lakes frozen over, there's still ice everywhere, but it's, it's pretty, it's pretty gloomy out here. Is that general consensus? Pretty yeah, gloomy? Yeah, it's not looking good. No, it's a gloomy outlook. Now, um, I'm very, very happy to be able to hook you guys up with this. We have some guides from all different areas of the coast, some pretty renowned guys. Some of them are my heroes that we're gonna bring in on this video and they're gonna chime in and talk about all the different base systems. We're gonna hit Matagorda last. We're gonna start in South Texas and work up. So, hey, thanks for everybody that participated. But here we go. Let's hope we have some, you know, some decent news, more than bad news. Like I said, it's a little bit early right now to, to judge exactly what, what, what it is we're seeing. So we're gonna get with them and then we'll get back with Matagorda uh, a little bit later on here. All right, our first stop is Port Isabel with Captain Brian Barrera. Brian guides over 300 days a year. He's really in touch with the, the ecosystem down there. Brian went and rode around, and then when he, he got back to his truck, he, he gave us a report. So this video is going to be kind of lengthy, so I'm going to keep these short. But yeah, Captain Brian Barrera in, in Port Isabel is with us now. Hello, my name is Captain Brian Barrera. I was asked to do a quick video from my, from my friend uh, Caleb about what seems to be a fish kill in the area. You know, hopefully not too bad of one. Still some signs here and there. I did a couple of walks along shorelines today. I, I guide here, I'll start off by saying I guide locally, South Padre Island full time, South Padre Island, Port Isabel area, Brownsville Ship Channel. And um, you know, I'm heavily involved. I'm out on the water 300 days a year. And uh, you know, we're all worried, hopefully that it's not too bad of a fish kill as it seems to be, but we're gonna see what happens. Like I was telling Caleb earlier on the phone, I've been walking the shorelines, uh, all the places that I could get access to with my vehicle, get down there. Lots of them are fenced off and some of them are just, you know, too muddy and whatnot. Uh, I didn't take my boat out. It's blowing big time today and really cold still. So a little dangerous to be out, but you know, I've been walking the shorelines. I've been seeing a lot of pinfish, um, mainly bait fish and things like that. I've also been talking to uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, a couple of the game wardens. And some of my friends that are, you know, local biologists that work with Parks and Wildlife and, and other agencies. And uh, they've been seeing some fish kills. Not as, uh, they say, it doesn't seem to be as bad as, as some of the places up north. But um, they're seeing a lot of what they call indicator species, which is obviously going to be the fish that are going to die quicker, the smaller fish that can't handle the weather and the cold and the frigid temperatures, such as your, your pinfish, your ladyfish, your mullet, a lot of the puffer fish are what they're seeing. Um, not as many sport fish. That's not to say that there isn't any sport fish out there because the guys have told me that they cruised a certain shoreline that's adjacent to a bunch of structure and some rocky areas. And uh, they saw almost every species that we have there, you know, all the way from red snapper, inshore red snapper that people didn't really know were there, mangrove snappers, some big snook and some big trout too. Uh, but like they had said, it was mostly indicator species, uh, the pinfish, the bait fish, and those ones that are going to die first that, that they saw. That's not to say that there's not a ton of sport fish layered on the whole bottom, you know, because as soon as it get warm, gets warm this weekend is when everybody's going to be able to see what's really happening out there. If there was a ton of dead speckled trout or snook or anything or tarpon or anything down there on the bottom, you know, uh, one thing they said they didn't see was tarpon, which is lucky. We're lucky. Uh, I think the snook are going to be good. Most of them. I think most of the tarpon are going to be good because uh, they are already down there on the bottom. You know, uh, one thing they said they didn't see was tarpon which is lucky. We're lucky. Uh, I think the snook are going to be good. Most of them. I think most of the tarpon are going to be good because uh, they are already in the deep water this winter trying to survive. That's where they go during during this time of year. They're already there. They didn't have to get there in a hurry with the trout. They just had to move down in the thermocline to get comfortable and at a safe depth where they're not going to be affected by the temperature as much. Although uh, a lot of those fish are in there, there is some, some areas, you know, adjacent to our deeper pockets, you know, like the Brownsville Ship Channel and areas, you know, the the areas that are off to the side of those and like um, the Gaiman Bridge area, 
the Lobo del Mar, Puente de los Lobos area, I think that's what it's called. Um, those are little flats back there with really quick access to the channel, you know, so hopefully lots of those fish did good, but, you know, in the walks that I took, I didn't see a ton, but like I said, that's not to say that there isn't a ton, so hopefully everybody can do our part to practice in conservation, you know, over uh, better our conservation than we all do, because obviously all love to eat fish. Where lots of us are guides, full-time guides that live off of it, and lots of people like to kill them also, you know. So hopefully we can just hope for the best and say that, you know, that the fisheries can rebound a lot quicker, or maybe it's not as bad as everybody thinks, but nobody's going to know soon. So if we can all take our part to help with conservation over the next at least week or two, you know, until the the real numbers are out, we can see what's happening. It'll be cool. You know, I always offer uh, i always try to tempt my clients to do catch and release and hopefully they will you know if not then most people hopefully uh will offer a discount to the people that you know want to practice catch and release or try to convince people as much as they can to just take what they need to eat for that night or that evening if that's yourself um but i understand everybody's got their own ways and so that's perfectly fine hopefully everybody uh works out good in your fishery and hopefully you know it's not as bad as we all think let's hope for the best Thanks, guys. Thanks, Caleb, for the time. All right, now we're going to move a little bit north to Port Mansfield. Captain Wayne Davis with Kelly Wigglers. Uh, I don't have to give Mr. Davis a introduction at all. He's one of the leaders in the industry. But he and, and Ruben Garza, Captain Ruben Garza, went out. They ran the airboat, looked at some stuff around there, and then ended up running their shallow sport up to the land cut. So we're going to let Mr. Davis tell about what he's seeing there in Mansfield. Howdy folks, Captain Wayne Davis, I'm here with Captain Ruben Garza and Captain Ben Pascal, the cameraman. It's, um, what is today, Friday? Friday, um, 11.26. 11.26, and uh, we're here from Captain Caleb McCumber. He's going to do a report on his YouTube channel, and we're in Port Mansfield, Texas. We are, uh, we've seen a high, moderate to high concentration of dead trout and some snook and a few reds along the main portion of the bay system in the middle of the bay but in the back bays Ruben? The back bays luckily we hardly saw anything so that means they ran off that uh, back sloughs and ran into deep water so I, we're lucky there. There's a big concentration of big trout normally in those areas. Yeah so it looks like most of them have moved out of the back I mean skinny stuff. We're in an airboat, Captain Ruben's airboat here. We could never go where, we're, where we went today in a normal boat. Uh, but the main shorelines of the Laguna, Lower Laguna Madre have, have a moderate to high concentration of dead fish and fish on the bottom once we pass. Right. Unfortunately, we, I don't think we've scratched the surface yet. There's a lot of dead fish in the deep part of the water where we can't run in our airboat. Uh, but we did see some tails floating. We did some turn around and saw quite a bit of four to six pound trout. Uh, the high concentrate, concentration is about three to five. Three, to six, yeah, three to five, six pounds of good breeders. I mean, it's, it's sad. So uh, we're going to make a run to the uh, land cut and we'll send you all a report in that regard also. Thank you. Howdy folks, Captain Wayne Davis here with Captain Ruben Garza, Captain Ben Pascal's got the camera, and Captain Bill Gregson's up here. This is our second report of the day. It's Friday. Friday. Do we know the date? That, hell, I think it's the 20th, 20th or 20th, yeah, 20th. Yep, just after the cold snap, uh, Captain Ruben and I and, and Ben did a, uh, a report earlier, and we were in Ruben's airboat, specifically targeting the shallow flats and back bays. Uh, south of Port Mansfield. Now we're in the X3 and we're north of Port Mansfield at the mouth of the land cut. Ruben, what are, you, what are we seeing? So far we've seen a lot of black drum with the occasional uh, bull red, uh, but a lot of black drum. They're all in the uh, upper 20 to lower 30 inch slot. Yep, yep, and some small ones mixed in. We have not seen one speckled trout and we have scurried the shorelines. Yeah, thank God, man, so far. So I think our next plan is attack is go further up the land cut and then hit the west shoreline towards the Oakmonts and Sentry Point. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll have a, a good report. Yeah, yeah, but like I said, a lot of trout south of Port Mansfield and some reds dead. North of Port Mansfield at the mouth of the land cut, all we have found is black drum and the occasional bull red. One thing worth noting, the surface water temperature about a foot under the boat is 39 degrees. Drop the thermometer at the bottom of the land cut, at the mouth of the land cut, and it is also 39 degrees and a high current. 
So it's third, the water is still extremely, extremely cold. It is, and the, the current is ripping too. Current is ripping. So uh, this is for Captain Caleb and his crew up there, upper, upper coast area, Captain Scott and all of those guys, and uh, they're going to put something together for YouTube. So good deal, and thanks to Captain Ben and Captain Bill and Captain Reuben for providing the vessels, the and cameraman, Captain Wayne. and uh, I'm just here along for the ride. Right, folks, Captain Wayne Davis and Captain yep. Reuben again, uh, Ben and Bill. This is our third video for the day, and we're yep. going to recap. Go ahead, Ruben. Well, um, you know, we were inside the land cut, which we had, that was the second video, so we worked our way south from Gladys all the way down to Port, and man, between Gladys to about Century Point, we might have seen maybe 20, 30 fish, uh, so we were kind of happy about it, but then all of a sudden, we came across a little bit south of Century, man, and I'll let Wayne explain what happened. It was pretty bad. It was, uh, we ran into, similar to what we saw south of Port Mansfield, about two to three miles north of Port Mansfield resembled the same, or yielded the same result, which was a pile of fish between the three to five pound range, right. upwards of eight and a quarter. We documented a couple in the 29 inch range, and uh, we actually found one fish that I had tagged back in December uh, with the Heart Institute that washed up and uh, was able to document that. Uh, the tag in and of itself told us that the fish were trying to move south and I think they just made it to a certain point and they just couldn't make it anymore and they all died and they had washed up right there just like that. Just along the shoreline there's a bunch of them too. There's a bunch of 25 to 27 inch fish on that shoreline. Little ones too. Yeah, oh yeah, don't get us wrong. There's a bunch of little ones too but there's a good amount of big ones man. It's, it's tragic pretty depressing to see that there at the last home stretch when we we're coming back so what we can um, finalize the day is is from about three miles north of Port Mansfield southbound about eight miles seven, eight miles, yeah. seven miles of Port Mansfield is, 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 it seems to be in our opinion and this is subjective a lot of fish trout yeah um, but again, what the, what's the definition of a lot? I guess it's up to the scientists and the folks at Texas Parks and Wildlife to determine. True. And uh, like I said, up north, I mean, it was, it's promising, but uh, you know, then again, we still need to give it a couple more days to see what wash, washes ashore. Uh, so, God willing, we'll, we'll be good. Yeah, so far it's a little bleak, but I uh, hope, hope our, keep our fingers crossed that it's not any worse. Because it didn't seem to me it could get worse, but we'll see what happens. But anyway, thanks a lot. We're going to get this up and we're going to get this out on YouTube as soon as possible. And special thanks to Captain Ben, Ruben, and Captain Bill for uh, coming out here today. And it was cold today. We had water temperature 39 degrees. So uh, get this report put together and get it out. Thanks a lot. And remember, practice conservation if you can. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, I hate to hear that. Mansfield is is a place that's dear to my heart um you know for those fish to be washed up like that it's absolutely heartbreaking but the good news is nature usually takes care of itself so now we're going to move up to baffin bay to captain michael chrisman uh michael went out and took a ride around today and he's going to tell us what he saw there the the thing about baffin is they have the rivera channel that runs up into Baffin. It's pretty deep water. It doesn't have much for bar traffic, anything like that. So it's going to give their chance, their fish a chance to sit on the bottom and, and maybe survive a little bit more in other areas. So we're hoping to hear some good news from Captain Michael. Hey y'all, this is Captain Michael Chrisman from Baffin Bay here in Rivera, Texas. Went out this morning, cruised around most of Baffin, looked to see what kind of dead fish we had. And for the most part, it looks good. I saw maybe five or six dead trout, no reds, no drum. Of course, there's handfuls of mullet. But other than that, that's it. I mean, I cruised probably 60 plus miles of shoreline and it looks good. Not a lot of dead fish. Um, we have plenty of deep water and rock and mud around here with no barge traffic in the middle of our bay that I think they had enough time to go and hunker down at, but there's no telling what happened in the intercoastal. Um, I didn't make it out that way, but uh, I have buddies in Corpus that said there was a few dead fish in some spots. Some spots there was quite a few handfuls, but 
it's not as bad as we were thinking. I mean, there could be more dead fish somewhere around here, laid on the bottom, but I'm happy with what I saw. Um, I'm sure a lot of us were expecting, expecting it to be bad, but we just gotta be sure and protect our resource and practice a lot of catch and release. I know for a while I'm gonna be doing or pushing catch and release for my customers. I'll have an empty stringers program started up with uh, support from some of my sponsors. So let's just all stick together and try and protect our fish out here in the bay. I hope y'all have a good one and stay catching them, stay releasing. Well, that's good news to hear, Michael. I I hope that I hope that it, the the forecast is relative to what you're seeing now is it's good to hear that we have a bay that, that's getting by and and surviving we're going to move up the coast to aranda's pass to captain dean thomas slow ride guide service slow ride adventures not sure slow ride something um captain dean he's a regular member of bite me you know he, he's part of the crew part of the family we're really happy to have have him involved dean's really been keeping an eye on everything throughout this whole this whole situation uh, he sent me some pictures of of a bit of kill that they've had there and it's it's disturbing to see but you know i'll let dean tell you all the story on that one hey everybody it's captain dean thomas of slow ride guide services coming to you from aransas pass today uh, i'm at the boat slip where my uh, the marina where my boat is parked um, where i picked up a couple of floating tarpon yesterday we've had two dead tarpon due to the freeze um, immediately um, today We've seen a whole bunch of speckled trout floating. Um, it's 32 degrees at the moment. The last couple of days it dropped down to 19 overnight. The wind was savage, just beat the shorelines. The tide dropped out. Um, so over here at the marina where I'm standing, it's kind of a refuge uh, for a lot of fish. Today, it's hard to tell, um, but right underneath me, there's hundreds and thousands of mullet just um, kind of flailing around on the surface. Some are alive, some are floating. Um, speckled trout are on the bottom. You can see them, they've pretty much sunk. Um, I'll be monitoring it the next couple of days over here. Um, get back with you guys and let you know what happens. Uh, it's pretty tragic in my area. We've been down along the causeway around the Lighthouse Lakes trails where the north wind blows up on the shoreline. And there's a bunch of speckled trout, large trout, croakers by the thousands and thousands um, piling up bait fish, minnows. Um, kind of strange, I haven't seen that many redfish yet. Um, a lot of sheephead, um, no drum and reds in mass. So hopefully there's a good sign somewhere. Um, appreciate you guys for checking in. Um, and we'll get back with you as more data becomes available. Thank you very much. All right, Dean, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I'm going to be getting back with you as the, you know, as this week goes on. We've had a last minute contribution to this video. I was sitting in my computer, editing it, getting it all shaped up and ready to go. And I was contacted by Captain Frank Zagira from Katy Coastal Guide Service. And Mr. Zagira gave me some news and some information that I, this video, there's a, there's a lot of gloomy stuff in there. And Mr. Zagira sent me this, this, these videos and I just, I have to put it in. So my transitions may be a little bit funny, but we are going to go to Rockport with Captain Zagura to talk about what it is that he saw over there. Hey guys, Captain Frank Zagura here with Katy Coastal Guide Service. Uh, with all this freeze and fish kill we've had, uh, just want to let you know, I'm down here in Rockport and there is light at the end of the tunnel. I was just down in Rockport Harbor. Uh, game wardens, uh, San Patricio navigation was out. Uh, there are thousands and thousands of uh, solid trout, solid reds, all manner of fish mixed in with mullet, actually swimming in about a foot and a half or less of water, trying to sun themselves and warm up from this freeze we've had. So uh, I know there's a lot of devastation out there, a lot of dead fish, but uh, keep up the uh there's light at the end of the tunnel all right guys now we're moving to port o'connor captain scott knowles uh, scott's gonna kind of tell you what he's seeing what, what he's hearing around the bay uh, i have some footage here that was sent to me by captain mark robinson is his drone footage um uh, you know what he's seeing so thank you so much captain mark for that 
But you know, let's let's let Scott talk about Port O'Connor and and see how it's looking there. I know that over social media, Port O'Connor seems to be one of the harder hit places that I've seen. Captain Scott Mole here. Uh, Caleb asked me to do a little bit of a rundown, I guess, of uh, the things that I've been hearing about the freeze. Uh, we've all heard all kind of stuff. Social media is full of photos and videos. Uh, they're all anecdotal evidence that we did suffer a big freeze. Had the full extent of it? Don't know yet. I live right here on Lane Road, right down from Charlie's. I've seen the fisheries, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife Fisheries Resources people driving up and down, they towing a boat back and forth. They're going out there on the bay, they're surveying. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're finding. I hadn't stopped and talked to them. They look kind of busy. But uh, personally, I've gone down, I've looked, and I've seen six, seven pound trout floating in the harbor. Uh, don't know what to say from there. Uh, I've been through this before. 1983 was rough. Uh, we were just getting it all back together and everything was looking good. And then 89 came along, February. And then again in December of 89, uh, following that, it was pretty rough. Uh, I'll be straight up honest with you. If we have, if this freeze turns out to be like those, uh, we've got two or three years of pretty rough fishing. I've always been catching release. Anybody that knows me knows that. Uh, yes, I keep a few fish to eat here and there, but uh, for the most part, my charters, uh, we're all catching release. I do a whole lot of fly fishing, as you can see but I also do a lot of conventional stuff. Uh, this year, I'm probably going to uh, concentrate more on being on the beachfront. Let's go chase some jacks. Uh, they're, not, they're not bothered by this. Uh, the tarpon are in Mexico, they'll be coming up. All our baby tarpon, we probably lost them. Uh, so we're probably not gonna have those small tarpon at the jetties. But uh, the big, big fish, they'll show up. They'll be here sometime in June you know, late May into June. Um, hopefully the, that fishery will kick off this year really well. Some years it's good, some years it's not. Uh, that bull reds, you know, catching bulls at the jetties and uh, just inside, and that'll be, that'll be on. Bull reds are offshore, they're not bothered by the freeze. As far as in the bays, personally, I'm not gonna keep the trout this year. I don't, you know, unless one's deep hooked, and uh, bleeding and he's not gonna make it, then I'll, I'll, I'll put him in the ice chest. But uh, for the most part, I'm gonna avoid even messing with them. I don't even wanna bother the trout. Let them go do their thing. Uh, it's not, I mean, I've heard it all back and forth, back and forth about it, but it's not the right thing to do to go jack them up. Uh, I've heard some people saying, ah, man, ain't nothing wrong. There, there's nothing to this freeze. It's being overblown. Most everybody that I hear saying that is pretty young. They hadn't been through these freezes before. Uh, I've seen that out of a lot of young guides. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I talk to the old salts too, and a lot of them aren't on social media. And there's a whole chain of people behind the scenes that uh, are still old salt, still out there fishing all the time. And when those guys are worried, like they're worried right now, then that makes me worry. And uh, I hate to think that I'm an old salt now, but I guess I am. I'm old. Anyway, I'm kind of salty. So anyway, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to make a suggestion that if you appreciate the fishery that you've been so blessed to have over the last 30 years since the last major freeze, that you think about giving something back. Give it a little bit, give it some time. Uh, I got grandkids coming up. I want them to be able to fish. I want them to be able to enjoy it. Uh, I'd really like to see us get back to a healthy, thriving fishery. I think it's gonna take a little time. Uh, I think this was a pretty big hit. Uh, all the data's not in yet. We're not quite to the point where we can say yes or no or anything, but even if it didn't, wasn't a major kill, didn't kill a lot, is it really gonna hurt us to be a little more conservative? Not really. I mean, none of us fish for food on the, on the table. I mean, we fish because we enjoy it, let's be honest. We all really enjoy being out there on the water, getting away from it, fishing. 
keeping a few fish as a bonus, filling a freezer, let's don't do that anymore. Thank you for your time, and I hope that's what you needed, Caleb. All right, we're gonna skip over Matagorda for now and, and end the episode with that. Now we're gonna move to the Galveston Bay Complex with Captain Alan Hall and Captain Jim West. Both of them went out today as well, and today is, what is today? Today is Friday the 19th. They both went out today, took Alan's tower boat, and uh, you know, took a look around, so let's see what those two have to say. All right, hey guys, we're out here on uh, the east end of East Galveston Bay. Me and Jimmy decided to come out here today, make a little video for y'all, do a report. Uh, seems to be, we're about the first ones to make a report on East Bay, and we're proud to say that it looks all right. Uh, you know, we're, we're here early, the water's still cold, but we have no bait fish dead on the shorelines. There's uh, absolutely nothing dead. We have not seen a single dead fish. No, have not. Uh, we ran all the way, come out of Stingray, all the way to the back of the bay. We're sitting here at, uh, back uh, behind Rollover Pass right now, and we went in and in and out of Sun Oil, different places along the shorelines, and uh, we've taken our time and saw, actually just saw a live drum earlier, just a little bit ago, that was on the surface, but he was very much uh, right up not not belly up so not seeing any mullet or anything is uh very promising so i think uh i think we're going to be good to go looks yep. good i think so too you know no we doubt. uh we at least expected to see the bait fish mm -hmm. on the shoreline no doubt um that was that was the first thing we were seeing from all the other fisheries down the coast and, um to not see that is a, a real promising sight um we kind of rigged up a, a thermometer that way we, we wouldn't get surface temperatures on GPS and everything, so we have one that we could actually drop down to the bottom of these deep holes um, these fish could be in. We've also dropped it down back in the back of East Bay. And, uh, and a couple of bios, and we've been reading, what, 40, 41? Yeah, so we... Yeah. A little, little rigged up, but... Uh, it's not it's not any of my <laughs> doing, but it was a great idea anyway. <laughs> we're, uh, we're about 42 degrees back here in the back. And yeah, I don't and we're know, real don't know if you can see it little hard to get sunlight on it but uh yeah i had trouble seeing it until it's right at you but it is it's showing 41 42 degrees back here in the back so we're showing the same thing at stingery uh pretty much every every single stop we've made and and dropped it we're showing somewhere between 41 and 42. Uh, hopefully these uh past couple of days of sunshine help them out which seems like it has um just a a little report like we said it's early the water's still cold so if anything that could float up might not be floated up yet but as far as right now it looks promising for our end oh it's very very much so we uh yeah. feel bad for the guys down south that's it's tragedy um, i had dreams of our our end looking like that and to come out here and see this man it's a blessing that they as far as now they're saved um, yeah, we're sitting just right here, 80 to 100 yards off the bank, and just absolutely no bait fish, nothing at all on the shorelines. Uh, we've just ran at least, I don't know, five, six, seven miles of shoreline, and not to even see not one dead fish is amazing. So that's, it's a blessing, no yeah, doubt. No doubt. No doubt about it. No so. doubt. We uh, we got a, a good fishery starting to turn around, so uh, it, it would have been a real heartbreaker for it to Mm. All be killed and have to start over. But uh no doubt. That's just a little report from me and Captain Jimmy and uh Appreciate the appreciate the taxi ride there, yes, Alan Hall. No yes, doubt. We uh no doubt we're out here making use of this cold weather. But uh we'll get another report back here Sunday, Monday, something like that once it warms up. But till then we're looking good down here. Looking good, very promising. We'll see y'all next time. All right, Alan. Hey, appreciate you. Thank you, Mr. West. Um, glad it looks good for you guys over there. Alan, I might be coming and parking an RV beside you. Mr. West, still like to hang out with you. Hope you like Dos Equis. All right, now we're moving up the coast to Sabine to Captain Chuck Uzzle. Uh, Captain Uzzle writes in the Texas Saltwater Fishing Magazine as well as, as many other publications. I've been reading Mr. Uzzle stuff for years now. So he's going to give us an idea of what they're seeing up in Sabine. Hey, guys. This is Captain Chuck Uzzle up on uh, the upper end of the Texas coast, Sabine Lake, Calcasieu Lake. Um, everybody's curious what's going down with the uh, with the freeze and kind of the state of our of our bay. Um, so far, 
uh, up until this point. It looks like we might have escaped and come out uh, pretty good. Talked to a Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries biologist today. They've been riding around. They've been looking at some things. It appears that the damage has been pretty minimal. So hopefully we're gonna we're gonna come out of this okay. Again, we got a couple of days to see if if we're gonna show any more signs of uh, any fish showing up. Uh, still kind of keeping our fingers crossed on the shallow water marshes and the way back lakes. But as of right now, it looks like uh, the upper coast has uh, has come out of this pretty good. Um, if we hear anything else, we'll certainly uh, share that with you. But for right now, it looks like Sabine may have made it through in good shape. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Rosal. I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I am going to be doing, we're going to put this video out, but then we're going to move on next week's video and we're going to do a continuation of this. We're, we're going to see what, what it is, you know, how it transpired, you know, what the final results that we see as far as a kill. I'm going to try to get um, some biologists on here to talk about the bait hatch and the bait kill and what we can expect from that in the future. One way I heard it put is the freeze hurts our fish today the bait dying hurts our fish tomorrow. So I'm really interested to dig into that. One thing I want y'all to understand is I was born in 81. I wasn't, I don't obviously don't remember the 83 or the 89 freeze. What I'm doing is I'm compiling information from people that either were here guiding through it or biologists that study this and understand it. I'm simply the, the middleman, the messenger. So I, I want to get those guys on. I, I want to, you know, see what we can expect in the future you know, what the forecast is. But Matagorda, I went and rode around in there on, I think it was Wednesday, maybe Tuesday, Wednesday maybe, I can't remember, Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, out in the middle of the bay, tons of dead croaker, sand trout, um, sheep's head, stuff like that. We saw a couple of specks washed up there. And then in the harbor, we saw snooks, uh, I think a speck or two, a bunch of sand trout, a bunch of ribbon fish, a bunch of bait fish. And that's where I lead to with the whole idea of Okay, if our, fi our fish that did survive the freeze, you know, what are we expecting now as far as, you know, food for them to eat? You know, that, that really bothers me. I flew the drone around Little Boggy, Big Boggy. I didn't make it to Lake Austin. It was a little bit shallow in there, but I, threw, I flew around in those lakes. Uh, the water was crystal clear. A lot of them were iced over. I didn't see any dead redfish in those lakes, so hopefully they made it up the intercoastal, and, and hopefully they're going to be all right there. Now, the one thing that has been you know, conveyed to me via the older guys or the biologist is that when these trout die or just game fish in general, when they die, they're laying on bottom. And I mean, if you think about it, they've let all the air out of their swim bladders. They're laying on bottom trying to stay warm. So if it did get them, there's a very good chance that those fish don't float up at all. And if they do, it takes a couple of days to do it. So when we were out there on Tuesday and Wednesday, we didn't see a lot of dead bait fish. But now that we, now that it's been a couple of days, I'm starting to see some fish. In fact, I got some videos sent to me and they're, they're starting to show up, you know, yesterday and, and, and today. Um, Stephen Morgan, he sent me some, some footage of trout from, I think it was a two days ago, something like that. And then uh, the guy that was with him, Chris Bach, he put out another video yesterday showing more of a kill. So we really don't know what to expect just yet in, in those deeper water fish. Down south in the clearer water, they can, they can see them laying on bottom. You know, uh, Dean Thomas sent me that video where you can see the, the bait fish on top, but if you look down deep underneath, you can see all of the, the, you can see bellies of fish that are laying on bottom. So I really don't know when we can judge bays like East Matagorda, West Galveston, that kind of stuff, because there was, you know, five or six or seven feet of water for them to get into, but we just, we just don't know just yet. Um, we may not know until it's time to go fishing as whether we can catch one or not. And you know, that it, it sucks that there's the uncertainty there, but at the same time, it, it, um, it's, it's, it's just going off the conditions and, and what we can get from our past. Just it, right now, a lot of it is a guess. I mean, it's that simple. All we can go off of is, you know, what we're told with it, but that, that's the conditions in Matagorda now, um, saw some dead bait fish saw some dead game fish, but it was just a little bit too early to call. I'm going to be continuing this on for next week. Um, there's guys like Michael Kabeca that are down in Matagorda and you know, he's keeping an eye on things and he and I are talking quite often. So we're going to put it all together and kind of conclude this series next week. And ho hopefully we have some good news for you, 
But, you know, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for caring about your bay system. Thanks for all the captains and guides and, and, and you know, fishermen that went out and helped us with this. It, it's something we all truly care about. Me, myself, I am canceling my trips. Uh, I've, obviously, during the freeze, I didn't run any. And I am canceling everything through next weekend. It's costing me a total of about nine grand. So whenever I ask you, hey, maybe give these fish a break, don't feel like I'm a hypocrite here. I'm, I'm putting my family's you know, bank account and well-being on the line just to try to give these fish, fish a chance to recover. So that, that's what I'm doing. I'm not guiding uh, for another week. And then I'm uh, it's catch and release only. That's it just period. Catch and release only. If you're on my boat, that's what we're doing. So anyway, hey, thanks for checking in on us. Uh, we'll continue to check back with you, and we will catch you on the next one.